Hello everybody, Savat here, and I'm back with another Eve Echoes video. In today's video, we are going to answer the question, why lasers? So, when I say the question, why lasers, it's going to be, are lasers going to be a right fit for you? Now, that takes into account a lot of different information on whether or not a weapon is going to be good for you or not. And so, results may vary. Hopefully this introduction and what we're going to go over in this will help you better understand if lasers will be right for you. And we are going to basically grade the lasers based off of how effective they are just on pure stats. And then we're going to go over some ships that use lasers, all the ships that use lasers, as a matter of fact, just so you can see if any of those ships are ships that you want to end up in. So to do this, I actually did create a spreadsheet now the spreadsheet that I made is uh, not the greatest spreadsheet in the world. All it is is putting together all of the the different weapon types and what they do. Let's go ahead and pull that up now. Okay, so here we go. This is my spreadsheet and on my spreadsheet basically what I did is on the left hand side I have the lasers, the well, the weapons set up in um, all of the short range weapons and then all of the long range weapons. Missiles were a little bit of a sore subject on this as I had to put the missiles in there. I did torpedoes uh, in for the smalls. So where I have your pulse lasers, your snub nose, your auto cannon, I also did torpedoes. Under your mediums, I did do torpedoes and rapid fire missiles. So I have both those listed in the same category there. And decomposers I just left off the list entirely. If you want to use them, you can absolutely use them. But as far as coming for this list, they're, they're not going to be taken into account. At least not yet. That might actually change once more ships use the decomposer skills and they're actually in the game. Alright, so for now let's take a look. Let's start off with the small weapons. So how I have this set up here, and again, when we first look at this on the left-hand side there, we have our small pulse laser, our snub nose railgun, the auto cannon, and the torpedo for the small weapons. On the very far right-hand side, I have the cost for all of these. Let me see if I can zoom this in just for the purposes of the video. Okay. So that's what we're looking at there. Now, a lot of times cost can be a factor into choosing a weapon. If you don't have a lot of time to play, maybe you want to have access to the most powerful or the most powerful weapons that you can afford. And for that being said, what I did here was at the time of this recording, which is December 14th, 2020, I have the cost, cost for the C-type uh, versions of all of these weapons listed on the right hand side for what they're in the market as of today. And this is going to fluctuate over time and not be the same. But as it looks right now, what I do is I have all of the best stats highlighted in green and all of the worst stats highlighted in orange. Now this is skewed a little bit because I do have missiles included on here as well. But as we can see, if you look at your pulse lasers compared to everything else, they have the most power grid required. Now to make up for that though, the ships usually have higher power grids that come with lasers. Now the activation cost is also on two different weapons. Nothing else has an activation cost except for pulse lasers and the snub nose railguns. It is possible the decomposers do have an activation cost, I'm pretty sure that they do, but we're not talking about those for this list. So of the two that do have an activation cost, if you, as you can see here the lasers have a substantially higher activation cost, 3.8 gigajoules compared to 1.2 which does mean lasers are more susceptible, when using lasers, you're more susceptible to being energy drained, nost, and vampired than any other ship because you're gonna depend more on that, uh, that activation of your uh, uh, lasers in order to fire and continuously do damage. Now, that being said, that 3.8 is kind of a lie. We'll go over this later when we go over the ships, but a majority of your laser using ships are going to get a 50% reduction to those skills. So in this case here, your 3.8 becomes 1.9. So 
Eh, I mean, 1.9 is still going to be higher than what the Snubnose Railguns use, but as long as you have the skills to use the ship, in most cases, uh, we'll go over again the ships that don't have that bonus later with the appropriate skills. Another thing that you can see here on the small weapons, and these are again the short range small weapons, they all have the same activation time of 4 seconds. Now this is going to be affected by your skills and whatever ship bonuses you have on that as well, but they're even across the board there. So as you can see in optimal range, torpedoes actually have the highest optimal range of the short weapons. Now that being said, torpedoes do not have an accuracy fall off. So that is as far as they go. They can't ever go any farther than that 5.4. That is their within range. So they have zeros in the other two. Um, that being said, the next best one is going to be the pulse lasers. So the pulse lasers are going to be able to do full damage up to 5.25 km. Again, this is all without skills. These are just base stats that would be adjusted by your skills. And then go all the way out to about 7.3. 7.75 at 50% damage with its accuracy fall off. But up to 5.25 km, you're good. Now a lot of the smaller ships that are going to use the pulse lasers are going to be extremely fast. Even if you orbit at 1, you're probably going to do a ring around that's going to be higher than 1 kilometer away. So that will actually be very good for lasers. You're going to be basically be able to apply your full damage. Now, your other weapons that are in the same category are your stem nose real guns and your auto cannons. Auto cannons having the worst range at this particular tier. Snub nose, they have the second worst range at 1.8 km, but their accuracy fall off is only 2.4. They actually have the worst accuracy fall off for the snub nose, but that's only 0.1 km less than the actual pulse laser. Now, the Pulse Laser has way more optimal range. Again, letting it go out to that over 7 km, nearly 8. Where the Snub Nose, even with all of it combined, is only doing hmm, 4.2. Auto Cannons. Auto Cannons are going to go out to, what, 6.36. So, technically, at this tier, for the guns doing 50% of their damage, the pulse lasers actually hit the furthest. Now, that is at doing 50% damage. Of course, the autocannons are still going to be go out, going to be able to go out further than that. However, those autocannons are going to lose more damage, so they'll be able to shoot out fat, or farther than the uh, pulse lasers in the uh, end. But I mean, because they're what they're going to if you double your fall off, you're doing zero damage. So they can get another 10 out of that, but they're going to be doing almost no damage. So they can go to 11 km, where the pulse lasers are going to do 7, 8, 9, almost 10. So it's not that big of a difference there. So that being said, if all of the ranges on here aren't too bad of a difference, except when you're looking at the snub nose, you want to go to the tracking speed next. So like I was saying, with the pulse lasers, your pulse lasers themselves are going to be able to hit from those further speeds out when you're doing a tight orbit in fast ships like frigates that are going to use your small lasers. Their tracking speed is the worst though. So coming in at 384, they do have that, the, the lower of the tracking speeds. So even if they're zipping too fast, they may notice some more misses or glancing shots. The actual best for tracking speed is you're looking at the snub nose rail guns. However, the snub nose railguns also have the shortest range, so they have to make sure that they work to stay within that, that optimal or even accuracy fall off. Your auto cannons are going to be the ones with uh, the middle of the range range there uh, for the tracking speed at 410. And if you're looking at overall DPS, the highest DPS for your small weapons is going to be the snub nose railguns coming in at 34.69 DPS the lowest is actually going to be your pulse lasers. So the pulse lasers are actually doing the least amount of damage at this tier for the close range weapons. Uh, next after that you're actually looking at the auto cannons and then the torpedoes with the highest being the snub nose railgun. So I have the damage type for each one listed 
Now the damage type is going to stay the same throughout all the tiers, but I still had it included on here. Your lasers are going to do EM thermal. I do have EM in bold. All of the ones that are in bold on here are going to be the primary damage type. Um, where you see the auto cannons do three damage types, the thermal and explosive are even. The kinetic is lower than both the thermal and the explosive. And torpedoes and missiles do all damage types at an even level, unless you have a ship that has skills that says otherwise. And lastly on here we have the cost. So if you're looking at making the cheapest for purposes of weapons, you're looking at buying torpedoes for your small weapons. Uh, the most expensive are coming in at those auto cannons at 15 million, but just chasing them are the pulse lasers at 14, right under it. Okay, so if we go up to still staying within the small category, the pulse laser, snub nose, and all of that, if you go to the mediums, as you can see here in the mediums, you still have the pulse lasers coming in with a higher power grid cost and a higher activation cost than anything else. Um, Snub nose real gun, the only being the only other weapon with a activation cost, only has a 4.1. So on this, with the 15 power grid, I'm sorry, the 15 activation cost, even if we half that, you're still looking at like 7.6. So 7.6 is still nearly double that of the snub nose rail gun. So all your ships that are going to get a 50% activation reduction to your medium pulse lasers your pulse scissors are still drawing more than any other weapon by far. So if we look at some of the other power grid costs there for your medium weapons, uh, what you're going to see is your rapid missiles actually take the least amount of power grid. Seeing how rapid missiles are, well, well sought after, they're actually a great weapon to put on ships like drone boats and stuff like that that don't use any other weapon skills. They have a small power grid requirement so you can stuff in a lot of extra stuff and they do an even amount of damage to everything and don't have to worry about any type of tracking. Alright, so our activation time, here's where things start to change a little bit. Our pulse lasers that we use are doing 5.25 5 seconds. So every 5 and 25 seconds, or 5.25 seconds what you're looking at is they're firing. The best one is actually the snub nose rail guns. They're going to fire off fast, so they're doing every 4.5 seconds. And our slowest is actually the torpedoes. So the torpedoes in this category are going to be the slowest firing, followed by, it looks like, your rapid missiles, uh, then your auto cannons. Now optimal range and the medium category, rapid missiles will take the cake. They are at 15.94 but they have no fall off whatsoever so they cannot hit any further than 15.94. Again this is all without skills. Next for your optimal range is going to come the pulse laser which can actually shoot stuff out to 12.9 km. So that's it's pretty impressive. 12 point, I'm sorry 12.6 km. So the 12.6 km is a lot compared to the others in this category. So if we look at our snub nose railguns, they're at 3.6 km and auto cannons are actually at the worst optimal range with 2.4 km. So yeah, snub nose railguns can actually be in more optimal range than the auto cannons at this range. It's kind of kind of cool. All right, so when it comes to fall off though, the auto cannons have a huge fall off of 10.32 km in this. Uh, in this particular category, where your snub nose railguns only have a 4.8 and the pulse lasers only have an abysmal 5 km. So your snub nose railguns actually have a, even though they have a good accuracy, I guess, better than the auto cannons at 3.6, their accuracy fall off is abysmal as well, giving them the shortest overall range in this category. Pulse lasers are going to be accurate, more accurate up to a distance, so they're going to do full full damage up to a better amount than what the auto cannons are going to do. So if you want to be a brawler, pulse lasers are going to apply full damage in a wide, wide, wide range, a wider range than any other weapon. And this seems to be what the trend is, other than missiles. <laughs> other than missiles. And so, I mean, if we look here, our pulse laser has a 12.6 km range with a 5 km fall off that's doing 50% damage. So that puts it at a total of 17.6 km. 
those rapid missiles head out to basically 16. So they can go nearly as far, but they're doing full damage. So your pulse lasers can get out a little bit further. Now that being said, your auto cannons can hit out at doing 50% of their damage at uh, 12.72 km. And at 12.72 km, that's 50%, but they can go out another 10 km after that. So at another 10 km, they're not going to be doing much bit damage, but they still can hit. So 12, I mean 22, they're definitely going to be the ones that can hit out the farthest still. Um, so that's that's something to be said. The, the auto cannons can apply their damage at a further range than almost anything else on this list, or I believe, yeah, anything else on this list uh, with just raw stats. But they're not going to do very much of it out there, and they definitely want to approach as close as possible. So having that fall off is going to do them do, do them pretty good if they get pushed away or they have to chase anybody. Um, so tracking speed in this one, the pulse lasers are still, still the worst at tracking at this point. The best still being the snub nose railguns, and the auto cannons are the uh, middle of the range. Your torpedoes and rapid missiles don't need to uh, do any type of tracking again. Now, as far as damage goes, the worst damage currently are the rapid missiles. They did recently catch a nerf and are only doing 35.34 damage. However, they're sacrificing some of the damage to have no tracking speed, a great optimal range. Their activation time is pretty decent. I mean, overall, they're doing pretty good in this spot, I would still say. Your best damaging weapon is the torpedo in this category, but torpedoes are kind of strange because they apply their damage a little bit differently, so the damage they apply is a bit of a lie. So out of the turrets that we have though, the highest damaging one is still going to be the snub nose railgun, followed by the auto cannon, followed by the pulse laser. Pulse laser is coming in last in this case, as far as the turrets go. Now, if we come over here to the price though, what you're looking at is the most expensive one is going to be those rapid missiles that we talked about. They're they're clocking in at 44 million, where 4 million for the snub nose railguns. Now, mind you, most of the time you're going to be fitting these medium weapons to cruisers, so you have to take that into consideration. Overall, I still think the laser is in a great spot for the mediums. And the mediums, it does have an abysmal damage compared to everything else. Uh, it's the worst damage of the turrets. However, it can hit optimally the, the best out. So where your other weapons are probably going to be within their fall-off range, so they're actually going to be losing damage, you can keep the pulse lasers within their optimal range more and you know that you're going to be doing that solid 39.5 damage. Uh, the others, if you can try to stay in your range and you can maintain that range and stay in there, yeah, you're going to do more damage, but in all likelihood, you're going to have times where you're outside of that range and, and not applying that damage to its full potential, which is what lasers excel at, staying in range and applying their full damage, as we can see by this chart here. Um, it looks like their their optimal range is really where they shine. All right, so let's go to the large close range lasers and other weapons. Uh, so for the large, power grid requirement is still off the chain. It's 1,067 megawatts compared to everything else there. It's like 200 over. So the pulse, the large pulse lasers require a ton of power, a ton. It's going to make it hard to fit a lot of other stuff unless you're using an oracle, which is going to get rid of 90% of that power draw. Uh, the activation cost of these lasers as well is 42.3 gigajoules. That is a lot of power per shot. That means you might have some capacitor issues, especially if you don't have the 50%, but even if you do have the 50%, you're still looking at 21.15. So that's still going to be a heck of a power grid, and that's per laser, mind you. So you got six of those on there, that's a lot of draw. Activation time, it looks like everything on this list as far as turrets go, they got back to being kind of in line again. So everything is about the same. They're all right there at that 7.88 seconds. Lasers do beat out everything a little bit by going to 7.85, but 0.3 of a second is 
really nothing. <laughs> 0.03 of a second, rather. Um, in this category as well, your slowest firing weapons are actually going to be the torpedoes. They've moved up to 14.4 seconds. And your large rapid missiles are at every 7 seconds are actually firing the fastest in this category. So that's, that's something to consider if you're looking at firing really fast with large weapons. Large rapid missiles seem to be the trick there. Um, optimal range on everything. What you're looking at here for these large Pulsators actually have a 25.2 km optimal range. 25.2. Look at the optimal range on everything else. 7.2 km on your stub nose railguns. 4.8 km on your auto cannons. Your torpedoes are 10.8 km. The only thing that beats it out is your rapid missiles, which set at 27.95. But that's it. They're at that 27.95. They're not going any further. The um, Pulsazers can go out another 5 km and do 50% damage, so getting up to 30. Uh, so they can actually fire farther than the rapid missiles in this case. Okay, so what are we looking at with the other weapons? Now, on here, your auto cannons have a huge accuracy fall off of 20.64 km, meaning that they can do 50% of their damage up to uh, that 24, 25 km basically. And your stun dose railguns, they're sitting there at 50% damage at 17.2 km away. This is a big deal, in my opinion. And the, and the reason why I think it's a big deal is because look at the tracking speed on these weapons compared to the other classes. These are the small, or not the small, these are the close range weapons. And you're looking at the worst is the pulse laser with a 5.79. For its tracking, it, its uh, tracking is completely abysmal. Uh, next is the auto cannon at 5.9. It's not much better. And then your snub nose railgun is coming in with the best tracking at 7.09. Well, even at 7.09 tracking, even it being the best, it's it's not that much better. So, with having to stay within 17 km to do 50% damage, yeah, the the weapon does a ton of damage, 75.67. But unless you can hold a target still and blow it up, it's going to be really hard to apply that damage. Now I could be proven wrong, but which apparently I am, which we'll get to in a second. But uh, let's take a look there. All right, so our damage on all of these, it does look like, again, the pulse laser is the worst. The, rapid, the, yeah, the large rapid missiles beat it out by doing 55.16 damage. But of the actual turrets, it's the worst. So your p torpedoes are doing 70.363, but again, torpedoes apply damage really funny because they have a huge explosion radius, which we're not taking into account here. Uh, your auto cannons are doing 65.34 damage, and those some of those railguns that we talked about are 75.67. So the railguns are actually doing a ton of damage, but you're most likely going to be within a fall off, so you're not going to see all of that. Uh, same thing with the cannons. With their optimal range only being 4.8, actually getting beaten out for the snub nose again for 7.2, you're almost always going to be fall off, but you're going to be doing 50% of your damage up to 20 km away. Now in this case here, you have the reverse on the lasers. So the lasers do less damage than everybody else, but you're in your optimal more. So that damage should stay steady. So within the first 25 km, you're doing full damage. With the auto cannon, within the first 4.8, you're doing full damage. But at 20 k or at 25 km, where the la pulse lasers are still doing full damage, they've already lost 50% of their damage. So technically, they're doing less than the pulse laser does at that range. So that's kind of how you have to envision where why lasers are good and why they would be good for you. If you're looking to apply and stay and apply full damage, then that's that's what lasers excel at and we are seeing the trend here on here with its optimal range. So as long as you can stay in the optimal range, your damage is going to be whatever the paper doll says basically. Where almost all of these other weapons are not going to be fighting in their optimal range. Okay, so looking at price to help you make your decision on what weapon would be good for you, for the large, you have 37 million for the pulse lasers, 240 million 
are what the snub-nosed railguns are going for. So somebody knows something about those that I don't. Uh, they're probably using them in like group settings where they can lock something down and just blow it up by doing a ton of damage. Okay, 20 million for your auto cannons, 15.9 million for your torpedoes, and rapid fires are 51 million. So the price has gone up pretty substantially in this particular category. All right, so that takes care of our close range weapons. Now let's take a look at the long range weapons. So for long range weapons, we have beam lasers, the rifled railgun, the strike cannon, and missiles. So the beam lasers, if you see a trend here as well in all three categories, you see the power grid itself. And yeah, the power grid doo -doo -doo, takes up the most. So beam lasers, you have uh, 15 power grid at being the worst. The best is your missiles only taking up eight. Activation time on the smalls is still 6.81 or 6.8 gigajoules. Even if that does get halved, you're still looking at 3.4 gigajoules per draw per weapon. So, what takes the cake on attack speed on this one here for small? It's actually going to be rifled railguns. So, for the long range weapons, what I've noticed after after looking at this chart is it looks like your railguns are going to be your highest damaging weapons. And they're going to do the most damage. And the reason why I say that is because they, if you look at the railgun here, it's in the green at 4 seconds. Rifled railgun, 4.46 seconds. Rifled railgun, 7.31 seconds. They're the fastest weapon. Now also, when it comes to damage, <laughs> rifled railgun in this one does 116. Rifled railgun, does 10. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Where is, oh, here's the damage. Uh, beam laser does 23. The rifle railgun does 24. Rifle railgun does 37 and 54. So where it's not topping the charts and all of them, missiles are usually taking the cake here. It is middle of the line or better than lasers with the damage. And it fires faster. So they're just gonna do a ton of damage. So your railguns are really going to be where your damage is at. Your cannons are going to be where your long extreme range is at. And your beam lasers are going to have probably the best optimal range overall. And we'll break that down now. So for your smalls, your beam lasers are using 5 gigajoules. They're firing every 5 seconds. Where your strike cannons are firing every 8 seconds. They're extremely slow. So with these strike cannons, you're going to get a ton of alpha damage is what it looks like. And then you have to wait a long time for them to fire again meaning misses are going to hurt you a lot with strike cannons. Okay, so what's our range look like with these long range weapons? So with lasers you have an 11 km optimal range. Now there's not really that big of a difference here because your rifled railguns have a 9 km and your strike cannons have an 8.5. You're talking within 1-2 km difference. That's not that big of a deal for long range weapons. So your fall off is 2.5. Well, your fall off on the rifled railgun is 5, and your fall off on the strike cannon is 8.75. What are you looking at here? The beam lasers themselves actually do the most um, tracking of all of them. So I think that stays consistent amongst your small, medium, and large. You, the, the beam lasers have the best tracking. But the tracking on the large is so abysmal, it's not even worth mentioning. <laughs> All right, so your beam lasers, in comparison to everything else, do 23.6 DPS up to 11 km. Rifled railguns are doing 24.76. Strike cannons are doing 18.99. Missiles are doing 24. Missiles are hitting out to 15 km. They're not going to hit any further than that. Again, based off of skills, it could uh, all of these can increase and whatnot. But so they're not going any further. But they do hit up to 15, so they're they're going to be able to hit, apply their damage fully. In the small category, I think missiles win because even though your strike cannons can hit out to 16 km, 17 km, it looks like just slightly better than these. It's going to be doing 50% damage. So you're talking about 10 damage basically. 
10 DPS at that range per <laughs> strike cannon. So not much. Ultimately, I don't see lasers, the long range lasers, being that good in the small category. I think the other weapons outshine them a little bit in, in this category, in my opinion. All right. That being said, what you're looking at is missiles cost 26 million. You're looking at your strike cannons are actually your best sellers, which means that they're probably the worst at 1.9 million. 15 million for your rifled railguns, kind of cementing the deal that they're probably the best weapon for the small category. And then 5.5 million for the beam lasers. They are coming in not, not in a bad spot. All right, for medium, this is where things start to get a little bit more interesting. And so your strike cannon and your beam laser are actually tied for the amount of power grid that they take. So here, both ships are having uh, quite a big cost associated with that. However, your, your gigajoules per fire, strike cannons don't use any. Lasers are using 24.5. 24 Even if you have that, that's 12, which is double, double what the rifled rail guns are doing. So medium beam lasers are taking quite a big chunk of power every time they fire. They are firing once every 6 seconds. Your rifled railguns are firing once every 4.46 seconds. Your strike cannons are every 11.48 seconds. So your rifled railguns are going to be attacking the fastest again. Your beam lasers are right there in the middle. Cannons, poor cannons, they have to wait forever to fire. Only thing that's outclassing them are missiles. Medium missiles take 12 seconds to fire. They can reach out to 27.95 km. Our beam lasers are at 22 km. Now again, we don't see a big difference here. Rifled railguns are at 18. That's 4 km shy. And strike cannons are actually at 19.32. So a strike cannons can actually reach out and touch as well. Now, that being said, if we look at our falloff ranges, Lasers have an 8 km fall off. Hmm. So they're only going up to 30 to do 50% damage. Rifled railguns can hit up to 28 to do 50% damage. And your strike cannons are going to hit an astonishing. <laughs> Let's see, that's uh, 38, 39. Yeah, I would say about 38, maybe 37 point something. I don't know, but they go they go up pretty far at 50 percent damage. So this where it starts showing off their range. Now that being said, if we look over here, the tracking on all these weapons is is poor. 17.5 uh, lasers being the best, rifled railguns at 10.4, and the strike cannons at 9.69. The damage on here, though, the missiles take the cake. Your missiles are doing 43.13 damage, up to 27.95 km. That's huge. They're just doing a lot of damage. Now, they can't hit nearly as far, but that's that's still that's big. 43.13 up to that, after seeing their accuracy here and then the falloff ranges and knowing. So, yeah, at 27, you're going to have your... Strike cannons. Your strike cannons can hit out that. They can hit way farther than that. But they're not going to be doing nearly any of the damage of that. So they'll be doing what? And 26 is 13. 13 damage out at that range? Oof. And so, but here, again, like I said, even in this middle category, everything's kind of on the same same level, in my opinion. Missiles just seem to take the cake, though, here when it, when it comes to just raw straight damage. Yeah. All right, so for the prices of these, what you're looking at is beam lasers are actually the cheapest, coming in at 5 mil a piece. Next is your rifled railguns coming in at 9 mil. Your strike cannons, well, I'm sorry, your strike cannons are next coming in at 5.4 mil. Your, your rifled railguns are the second to the highest coming at 9 mil. All of these are, are very, very affordable weapons, except for your missiles. Your missile launchers in this category are 85 mil apiece, so quite a big jump to get to get that damage. <laughs> All right, and going into the long range, large. So beam lasers, they take 1,255 megawatts. 
your strike cannons are at 1,393. They have surpassed the lasers at this point. Beam lasers are going to take 61.4 gigajoules to fire. Now, half that you're looking at still 30 gigajoules per laser to fire. That is pretty insane. And when you start getting into these large ones, not all of the ships are going to have that bonus um, that is going to reduce the, the amount of, of capacitor need by 50%. The fastest firing gun in this section is going to be your rifled railgun coming in at 7.31, where your beam lasers themselves are coming in at 9 seconds, which is actually the second fastest firing, your strike cannons at 21 seconds to fire, and your missiles at 16.54. For optimal range, your beam lasers are at 48 km. 48 km is pretty decent, that's, that's a huge optimal range. Uh, the next one coming in at, at that is actually your strike cannons with uh, 38.64 km. So you're basically 10 km farther in optimal range than the strike cannons are. And your rifle railguns are actually coming in last at 36 km range for optimal. Uh, your missiles can reach up to 65.8 km on your larges, which is, is pretty crazy considering... So let's take a look here. This 65.8 km, and it's doing the highest amount of damage, 58.17. That's huge. Look at the beam lasers. We're at 48. 63, we're doing 50% damage. So we can go up to 63 km, which is still not even the missiles, and we're doing 50 damage or 25 damage at that range. Now we can go a little bit further than they can, but we're going to apply less and less damage whenever we do that. So these missiles being able to fire at this 65 km just and hit is is very impressive. Uh, your rifled ra rifled railguns have a 36 km range with a 20 km fall off. So they're going up to 66 km at 50 50 percent damage, and your strike cannons. <laughs> Woo. They're going out to uh, far, so you're looking at 73 km at 50% damage. So yeah, 73 km without any skills or anything like that, they're going to do 50% of their 40 damage, so about 20 DPS. That's pretty good. Now ultimately though, your rifled railguns, even though they can't hit all that far comparatively to the strike cannons, they still can outpace the the beam lasers because there's a lot of stuff that's going to affect your optimal your your fall off range as far as rigs and stuff go. That 48 km optimal range though ain't ain't nothing to cry home about. I mean, what you're looking at here is those rifled railguns do about four more DPS nearly five more DPS, but they're probably going to be outside of optimal range. So what that means is that tells me that the strike cannon and the rifled rail guns are definitely going to be able to strike out at further ranges than what the beam lasers want to. Lasers want to stay in their optimal range. They have a huge optimal range for a reason. They want to stay there. That puts them, in my opinion, as some type of mid-range brawler. They're not going to be your long-range fighters, they're not really going to want to be that close up, but if they do go close up, they probably are one of the better ships for it. They have really thick armor and really good optimal range, so I mean, they want to try to take advantage of those. Now, as far as the cost of our ship or our weapons in this category, your beam lasers are going to be 90 million, the rifled railguns are 500 million, strike cannons are running you 54 million, and missiles are running 49 million. Alright, so the ships that would take advantage of these lasers, what I have listed here is a list of all of the ships that I could find. I might be missing some, but I hope not. For our frigates, we have an Executioner, a, tor uh, a Tormentor, a Punisher, an Executioner 2, a Punisher Assault, an Executioner Interceptor, an Execution Interceptor 2, the Courier, and the Succubus. Those last two being faction frigates. Now, every one of those ships that I have listed there, and all the ships that are listed in this, in this area here, 
have bonuses to like laser damage or laser accuracy. They're supposed to use lasers, so they're not. I don't have the drone ships listed here that have drone focus because they can use any weapon that they want. Now, of the ships that use lasers, majority of them have a skill that's going to give them a 50% uh, 50% power draw need. So whenever they're fired, it takes 50% less of the capacitor. So uh, for, a for in this case, every single one of these ships, except for the two faction frigates, will actually take 50% less to fire if you have the appropriate skills. Once we get to destroyers, you only really have one line. You have the, uh, the, the, the Corsairs, or Corsair, however you say those. I haven't even ever flown one. <laughs> but you have the just the regular ones, the Navy Issue, the Guardian, the Interdictor, the Interdictor 2, and then lastly, the Covert Ops. And every single one of these also gets that 50% bonus, except for the Covert Ops. Now in your Cruiser category, you have the Omen Trainer, the Omen, the Mauler Trainer, Mauler, Omen Navy Issue, Mauler Guardian, Mauler Guardian 2, Omen Sniper, Mauler Interdictor, the Ashimu, and the Phantasm. Every single one of these ships, again, has that 50% reduction, except for the two faction ships. Now this is where it does get a little bit more interesting. And so over here in the bigger ships, we have only a few ships for your battle cruiser tiers. So you're, you have the Harbinger prototype, the Harbinger, the Oracle, and the Oracle 2. And all of those ships also do have that 50% capacitor need on the, the lasers. And basically your Oracle and your Oracle 2, they're getting to take advantage of that 50% on these large lasers, cutting that from 61 to 30, basically which is is pretty impressive honestly that's that's a huge amount of power that they're saving off of that now when you get into the battleships none of the battleships are getting that 50 percent power draw reduction so the apocalypse the abaddon the apocalypse striker the balgorn and the nightmare all of them are having to eat this 61.4 gigajoules per laser fire that is uh crazy it just kind of makes you want to think about whenever you're thinking about getting into some of these high-end battleships please make sure you have your engineering skills up they are going to be very very needed so one of the first things if you're planning on flying a Mar and you're looking at getting into an Apocalypse or an Abaddon as you, well Apocalypse is pretty much going to be your tier 9 ship if that's where you want to go then I would make sure you have your battle cruiser engineering in a good, good place by the time you get there, because it's definitely gonna require a lot of energy for you to use those weapons. And this thing, it fits a lot of weapons. <laughs> so yeah, those are all of the ships that I know of that are gonna be firing lasers. This is where I think lasers are at this time. I think they want to stay in their high optimal range. I do think that they're probably better off with their short range versions the beam lasers and um, are good don't get me wrong especially especially for doing lasers laser based stuff but it looks like the other weapons are able to do the long range game and the mid range game a little bit better than than the uh, the lasers can however the lasers can stay in optimal range better so don't let the DPS that is showing you over here fool you. A lot of these ships aren't going to be doing this DPS because they're not going to be within their optimal range. So depending on how you fly and what you fly, lasers definitely aren't bad. They don't look like they take the stats off of the other weapons at all, but they still do very well. And you got to think you're going to be the one who is applying your full damage a majority of the time where others are going to have damage falloffs and accuracy falloffs as well. So that's pretty much all I have to say about lasers and why you would want to use them in this in this case I mean there's a ton of other reasons why you would want to use lasers but if you like to fight and stay within optimal range and apply full damage then lasers might be the weapon for you if you like to try to push your accuracy or your range out as far as possible then strike cannons might be for you if you like to do as much damage as humanly possible and just see the big numbers and you may not always be in the range to actually do those big numbers but when everything lines up you're just doing massive massive damage then rail guns are probably for you they're just gonna do the most damage with their attack speed based off damage over time with their attack speed and their their damage being right there so that being said that's why I choose lasers 
I just like to be able to stay in my optimal range and shoot stuff. I mean, a lot of lasers are going to come into your ships as well, what ships you want to fly. And this list here is just all the ships that use lasers. So if you don't want to fly any of these ships on here that are laser-focused ships, pick one of the other weapons. Alright, I know that was a lot of information to go over, so I do apologize for the lengthy video. But hopefully, hopefully it helps understand some stuff, and hopefully I explained it well. I know I was babbling a little bit here and there, but if you did like the content, please go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoy my channel. Whew, all right, well, that was a lot to fit into a video this time. I'm going to go ahead and go. Y'all have a great day.